Hey there Hunters, Lord here, back with another Monster Hunter Wilds video. With all of the new people coming into this series with Monster Hunter Wilds, I wanted to make a quick video explaining a few things that might not be immediately obvious to new or even some veteran players. In today's video, we're going to be covering things like the damage coefficient. So in some of my videos, I've been seeing comments like, Hey, my greatsword showing I have 800 attack, but yours only shows 200. Why is that? And this will help cover that. And I also wanted to do a quick discussion on EFR, true raw, and motion values, just to give you guys some more insight into how we do the math behind building sets in the Monster Hunter series and to kind of help you better understand your weapons. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. Okay, so to tackle the first point, which is weapon coefficients, or you may have also heard them referred to as bloat values, in your options under the game settings, you can see this setting here, the weapon attack power display, and you have the option to display this with a coefficient or without a coefficient, and this essentially displays your weapon's base attack power with or without coefficients. The coefficient on setting is more for beginners, so you will see something like Greatsword sitting around 800 raw here in the endgame, while Dual Blades are around the 250 to 300 mark. And this is to just make sense intuitively, right? Greatsword is a slower hitting weapon that hits extremely hard and for high damage numbers, while Dual Blades is a fast attacking weapon that has much smaller damage numbers. So with this setting, a new player would be able to see, oh, the Greatsword has 800, the Dual Blades has 200. So it makes sense to me that the Greatsword will have higher damage numbers when I hit the monster compared to Dual Blades. However, the display without coefficient will show the weapon's true raw stat. And so a Greatsword and a Dual Blades with 200 raw will both show up as 200 raw. And the reason that you might not want this on is because, again, if you're new to this series, you might think something along the lines of, hey, well, Dual Blades and Greatsword both have this 200 attack stat, but the Dual Blades hit way faster than the Greatsword. Why wouldn't I want to do that damage faster? So why would I ever play Greatsword when I could just play Dual Blades with the same attack and hit the monster more often? What this comes down to are a hidden statistic called motion values. Every single attack in the game has a motion value, and while I won't get into the direct math because I haven't yet seen the data mined motion values for everything yet, basically think of it this way. If your dual blades has 100 true raw and your greatsword has 100 true raw, but your greatsword true charge slash has a motion value of, let's pretend, 150, when you hit the monster with that true charge slash, it will do 150 damage. Again, this isn't exact math, this is just a rough example to help you understand what's going on behind the scenes. Whereas your dual blades with 100 raw, their strongest attack might only have a 15 motion value or a 25 motion value, meaning their best attack will only hit for 15 or 25 damage. This is why Capcom have introduced the coefficient as a way to just help new players understand that hey, these weapons with higher single attack power have a higher value because they hit harder. Overall though, if you are a longtime veteran and you've played games with the true raw values before, Rise had true values, GU had true values, and many of the games before them also had true raw values, you'll want to set this setting to display without coefficient, as it allows you to more accurately correct for what weapon is actually better by comparing the true raw values. Now, I did some quick testing and it seems that the weapon bloat values or the coefficient are the same as they were in World. So if a great sword has 100 raw, when you have the coefficient on, it will show up as 480, but a dual blades with 100 raw would show up as only 140. This essentially just adds a bunch of extra math that we don't want to do when we're actually calculating which weapons are best. So again, if you're going to be trying to min max sets, I would highly recommend turning off the coefficient. However, if you're new and you just want to see the biggest damage numbers you can get, you could definitely leave the coefficient on. But if you have plans to play this game long term and really get into the nitty gritty, then coefficient off is my preferred method for weapon attack stats. Just to show you a quick example, here is a hammer without the coefficient on. You can see it has 231 attack, but if we turn on the coefficient, this jumps by hammer's multiplier of 5.2 up to 1201 attack. 
Again, the hammer will deal the same damage on your weapon hits, whether you have the coefficient on or off. Just your attack stat here on the right side of the screen will just show a different number. So moving on to our next part, which is our EFR calculations. EFR stands for our effective raw. This is essentially taking into account all of our attack buffs, our sharpness multipliers, our critical chance, and our critical modifier. And this calculation takes all of that, shoves it all together into a formula, and gives you what your effective raw is over the course of a hunt. So for example, our bowgun EFR calculation is our base attack times 1 plus our crit chance divided by 100, and that is multiplied by our crit multiplier divided by 100, giving us our EFR. So for example, if we had a weapon with 210 raw, if we had 90% critical chance on the set and no crit boost, the regular crit modifier is 25, it would be 210 times 1 plus 90 divided by 100 times 25 divided by 100, giving us an effective raw of 257.25. However, our melee formula also has to calculate our sharpness multiplier. Each sharpness level has different multipliers for both our raw and element. Again, we're just calculating effective raw here, so you can see that at each level of sharpness, we get a higher multiplier. This is why, again, white sharpness is a lot better than blue sharpness. So let's say we have a 230 raw attack weapon with white sharpness, 65% crit chance, and crit boost 3 for a 34% multiplier on critical hits. The formula would be 230 times 1.32 times 1 plus 65 divided by 100 times 34 divided by 100 for a total of 370.7 EFR. Now what these calculations allow us to do is actually take a look and see what weapon would be better even if it has less raw and more crit or more raw and less crit. So take for example these two theoretical melee weapons. We're running them both with crit boost 3 giving us a 34% crit multiplier. They both have white sharpness, giving us the exact same multiplier. The difference is the 200 raw one has 30% more crit, and the 230 raw, while having 30% less crit, does have 30 more raw. So when we plug these values into our formulas, we actually see that despite having 30% less crit, the one with 30 more raw hits 370 EFR, while the one with the higher crit only has around 349 EFR meaning the 230 raw option weapon would be more damage overall here. Now let's say for example in the 200 raw weapon we're able to fit critical boost 3 but in the 230 raw weapon we are not. You can see that this brings the 230 raw weapon down because of its lower crit and lower crit multiplier to within about 3.5 to 4 damage of the 200 raw weapon. This example is taken from the fact that I like to use an Ardian Longsword instead of the Blanganga Longsword. Despite the Blanganga Longsword having 30 more raw, it has extremely negative affinity and a lot less slot efficiency. So as you can see here, it would be very close and my raw weapon also has Blast. So Blast hits for 150 damage, which should easily make up for that 3 to 4 damage difference. This also really, really helps us show the importance of the higher sharpness levels. If you take a look at those same two longswords, if the 230 raw longsword drops to blue sharpness, it actually drops down significantly below the 200 raw longsword in terms of damage. Another thing our EFR calculations help us show is just how important crit can be. If two weapons have slightly different raws, like the 230 compared to 240 here, the same crit chance but the 230 has a higher crit multiplier and they both have the same sharpness, you can see the lower raw option actually hits for 6 more EFR. This is why crit is oftentimes significantly more important than just stacking raw attack. If you guys would like a chance to play around with this yourselves, I will definitely make it into a Google Sheets document that you will be able to download and play around with it and test your own weapons. All you have to do is enter in your numbers for your raw crit, your multiplier and sharpness, and the calculations in this last column will do it themselves. However, one really important thing I want to say is that if you are not really all about min-maxing your builds or speedrunning, or if you're just trying to have some fun and you can't be too bothered with trying to hit the highest damage number possible, you don't really need to know all of this stuff. 
At the end of the day, this is very nerdy stuff that I like to do because I'm an accountant. I love spreadsheets, love numbers, love math, and I know a lot of the Monster Hunter community follows me in that way. But you definitely don't have to spec into all of this and go this in depth to enjoy your Monster Hunter experience. So if all of this is a little overwhelming or you think it's just not worth it to you, you definitely don't have to worry about this. You can still have a ton of fun in Monster Hunter Wilds without knowing all the ins and outs and calculations and formulas. So that is going to do it for this video. I wanted to keep it as short and as simple as possible. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with anything or spend three hours looking at the motion value charts for every weapon and calculating X, Y, and Z. I wanted to give you guys these very simple calculations that are easy to understand and are very plug and play for understanding how EFR works and why it is important. If you guys did find the video helpful, do be sure to drop a like down below to support the video completely for free and to let YouTube know to recommend this to other hunters. If you're new to my channel, new to Monster Hunter, or if you just like nerdy math videos like this, or if you're interested in all sorts of sets, guides, and even more for Monster Hunter Wilds, I would ask that you consider subscribing to my channel. Nearly 90% of you guys who have watched over the last month are not currently subscribed to the channel, and if just one out of every 10 of you would subscribe to the channel, we would more than double the subs that this channel has. Again, it's totally free, and you're always welcome to change your mind later if you're finding the content just isn't for you. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching me nerd out over Monster Hunter math. I wish you all a good day, and happy hunting.